Hi, I'm Elizabeth Salamani. And I'm Fawzi Ali. Located just north of Atlanta, Gwinnett County is one of the fastest growing counties in the nation. With a population of over 850,000 people, Gwinnett prides itself on its multicultural diversity, its award-winning school system, and its ability to provide a quality workforce for the emerging economies. Like many other cities and counties in the country, Gwinnett has not been immune to the recent economic downturn. It was estimated that in 2012, there were over 26,000 evictions and 19,000 foreclosures. These numbers reflect a total of 112,000 family members who were left without homes. You know, honestly, homelessness is a, uh, it's like anything else. The spectrum, it, it, it really touches, and now, especially in the last several years, it touches most areas of our society. Uh, over 121,000 people in 2011 uh, were listed as homeless, not having permanent homes in Gwinnett County. Um, along with those people were 6,000 children. and that's a lot of kids. It's really not easy to put into a geographical area. There are areas more prone to it than others, uh, but I, I think the, the best thing to do when educating ourselves with homelessness is to see that it can happen at any economic area and in any geographical area. I mean, I think the first misconception is that, they, you know, that Gwinnett County is a prosperous, uh, affluent county and that there's no homeless people there. Gwinnett County has more extended stay motels than anywhere else in the United States. People tend to think that homelessness is something that's caused by a lack of education, a troubled background, or drug use. But an unexpected situation can cause a person from any economic status to face a period of homelessness. Most people, when you think of a homeless person, you think of somebody living under a bridge or you know, in a tent, old furniture, but that's not necessarily the case. What people will say, well, you, didn't, you don't look like you're homeless. What does a homeless person look like? We contacted Donna Schwartz, a Gwinnett County native, through United Way, a nonprofit organization she turned to in her time of need. Her story is a perfect example of how an ordinary person living a middle class lifestyle can go through a series of unfortunate events and lose everything in the blink of an eye. 2008, um, after about 23 years of marriage, my husband and I decided to divorce. Unfortunately, within that year, the bottom dropped out on the real estate market, as we all know, and unbeknownst to me, through some poor financial decisions, I'll say, um, our home was foreclosed, our family home was foreclosed on. My credit was pretty much destroyed because of the foreclosure. So I was not even really in a position to be able to rent an apartment if I wanted to. So I was to the point where I was about to live in my car. I didn't know what else to do. You know, it's not something you can prepare for. And things happen and in the blink of an eye, your life changes dramatically. And so I turned to one of the um, agencies that the uh, United Way works with, um, and they have a transitional housing program. Through the program, um, we were able to save a lot. They gave us the tools that we needed, um, you know, to get our finances in order, to get my credit restored again, uh, pay off whatever, you know, debts I owed. Christmas Eve, we moved into our, we closed on our home. We spoke with Deborah, the Executive Director of the Interfaith Outreach Home, a transitional housing program in Gwinnett County, and we talked to her about her interactions with the homeless population. Many of the people she has encountered have touched her with their stories, but there was one that seemed to stick with her the most. I would have to say the person um, that most inspired me was a single mother who graduated our program last year. Uh, I was impacted by her story because she uh, was an immigrant to this country really and had been, um, had been, uh, been battered and abused by her husband for the 13 or 14 years that they were married. Um, she was threatened by him daily. 
Eh, cuando yo vine aquí en el año 2008, when I got here in 2008, I had many problems with the father of my daughters. I was an abused woman, verbally and physically. I decided to separate from him because there was a big problem with him. Me abusó físicamente, me tocó salir corriendo de... He attacked me physically, and I had to run from where I lived, barefoot. I had to hear my daughter scream and scream. I thought he was going to kill my daughters. And she said that, you know, while she really could not muster up enough courage to leave on her own, she felt compelled because she had two daughters who were witnessing the abuse. And I guess the straw that broke the camel's back or the final push that led her to inner faith was the prior night to coming here. She spent the night <clears throat> outside in the woods, having been uh, driven there by her batterer, her husband. And she said the cry of her daughters from inside was really the compelling piece that said, I have to move away from this situation. Before IOH, when I lived in that apartment complex in Lilburn, my car was stolen. My daughters also saw somebody mug another tenant in a hall of the apartment building. That made them very nervous, and it made them feel very insecure. And that was all in the addition to the violence that they saw from their father. Everybody who lives here is mandated to save a minimum of $500 a month. So here was a person who was barely, you know, above that. And by a lot federal guidelines, we really were not, uh, should not have taken her as a client, but her, her compassion for doing better and providing better for her daughters compelled me to give her a chance. In IOH, nos sentimos. In IOH, we really felt protected. We felt saved and we felt supported. IOH really felt like a family. And that if I needed something or had a problem, I could talk to the manager and she would help me solve them. Or I could talk to the counselors and they would help me solve the problems too. But the best part and what made me the happiest at IOH was when I received the letter saying that I could buy my house. The process of recovery from homelessness is not quick or easy, but with self-motivation and help from your community, anything is possible. It's okay when people are down, you don't step on them. You don't kick people when they're down. You give your hand and help lift them up. And even as low a point that we had gotten to in our life, we always reached out to people to uplift them. You can move off the edge and that you really can, you know, have a, a, accomplish a good life for yourself and your families by, you know, working hard, some discipline, and some folks standing behind you who believe in you. I think that's the biggest thing is asking for help. And you know, sometimes that takes, when you're not used to uh, doing that, it may take a little bit of encouragement uh, to get to that point. This experience I had at IOH confirms once again that the person that wants to succeed in life will work towards their goal and will succeed. Sometimes I get a little emotional and cry. Always keep your heart 
your mind and ears open for what they're dealing with and maybe be that person that is able to recognize at times what the struggles are and maybe be able to direct them towards the paths that uh, will help them to be have some type of solution for them. Anything you have to give, whether it's time, money, or encouragement, can assist those in a time of need. Whether you volunteer at your local shelter, donate to your local Red Cross, or help to spread the word, you can make a bigger impact than expected. With a little bit of creativity and motivation, anyone of any age, social status, or race can help fight homelessness. We chose to make a documentary. What will you do?